We are in week three of a series called The Comparison Trap. And uh, I wanted to do things a little bit different today. Uh, I want to show you an illustration about uh, using paints and, and how that illustrates or uh, speaks to the message that I have for you today. Um, what we're going to call this one, write this one down, who you don't have to be who you don't have to be. And I want to read something to you uh, before we get started, something um, that I found and modified for myself um, and, and something that, that really speaks to me and encourages me as I read it um, every day. And it's 15 attributes of humility. 15 attributes of humility. And let me just read this list to you real quick. It says, number one, there's no job too small for you Number two, you naturally seek advice and counseling. You don't always have to be right. You freely admit your flaws, failures, and mistakes. You can be corrected without getting defensive. You can live, you live to help others succeed. You celebrate other successes. Remember, we talked about that one last week. Uh, number eight, you're faithful. You're available, you're teachable, you're thankful. Number 12, you're not easily offended. 13, you're not entitled. Remember, all of these are attributes of humility. Two more. Number 14, you're quick to forgive. And the last one is you're confident in who you are and who you are not. And so remember, the title of this message is who you don't have to be. And, and I want to spend some time talking about that and, and some things that God showed me and some things that, that I wrote down as, as he was talking to me about this and, and giving this message to me. And, and I was, uh, you know, really uh, putting it in my heart to, to fully understand some things that I wrote is some things have been placed inside of you that come out naturally. We're, we're talking about comparison. We're talking about I have skills, abilities, and talents that are different from your skills, abilities, and talents, and we are okay with mine being different than yours, which is different than hers, which is different than his, and, and we're okay with that. Some things have been placed inside of us that come out naturally and uniquely. So, so we're born with some of these things, and, and naturally without even thinking instinctually they come out uh, just as we do life and as we go out and, and do things second thing is some things are placed inside of us that require us to dig a little deeper to find out about who we are I, I told you uh, before that I'm a number one on the Enneagram and and the whole idea of the Enneagram is figure out who you are and, and know yourself a little bit more. And, and it requires digging deep. It requires, oh, I am that way, or I react that way when this situation happens, or in this environment, I act this way. And, and, and it's in those things that we figure out a little bit more about who we are and, and what makes us unique and what makes us different. Uh, and the last one that I wrote down is some things are shown to us through different life experiences. So, so let me just uh, re repeat what I said. Some things are placed inside of us that come out naturally. They're, they're unique to us. We're born with those things. Some things are placed inside of us that we have to dig a little bit deeper to fully understand a little bit more about who we are, what makes us different, what makes us uh, somebody that, that has some things to bring to the table, that has some things to bring to uh, an organization, that has some things to bring to the family that is different from everybody else. And then this last one, some things are shown to us through the different life experiences that we go through, through, through the challenges that we go through, the storms, the, the tough times, and through the triumphs, the, the victories that we have and the things that we do well. And, and when we win, how do we react to those things? And so all of those things combined help us to understand who we are more and more. Uh, in Ephesians 2, Paul talks about this in uh, verse 10. He says, for we are God's handiwork. In another translation, it says masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works, 
which God prepared in advance for us to do. So each one of us has a different skill. Each one of us has a different ability, multiple maybe, um, that, that we bring and as a whole, we can create, we can build, we can do amazing things if we're united together and, and not concerned about, oh, I don't have what you have, so I need to work on that and, and get that for myself. No, we can work together and build something together using my gifts, using your gifts, and when we combine it, who knows what can happen. And, and God is saying, you are my masterpiece. You, I, I created you just the way you are, just the way I wanted you to be. And, and don't allow comparisons or, or the traps of comparisons or, or other people to, to take that away from you because I made you just the way I wanted you to be. Now, that doesn't mean that we just sit back and say, oh, this is just who I am. This is the way I was made. No, no, no. We get better. We grow. And remember, we have some things that are natural in us that come out and some things that we dig a little deeper to fully understand and get better and hone and and all those things. But this comes right after Paul explains how much grace we have been given by God. And he says, we were sinners, we deserve all this wrath, we, but we received mercy, we received grace. And, and, and it's, it's in this moment that we can understand that God has given us unique skills, abilities, talents, and, and it's a gift. So what you have is a gift for you. What I have is a gift for me. And together we can do these amazing things. And, and so it means that some of us have been given the ability to be teachers. Some of us have been given the ability to be an engineer. Some of us have been, a, I used to think that if you wanted to do something good for God, you had to go into ministry. You had to be full time pastor or, or whatever. And, and some of you will have that gift as, as you figure out and you go through those life experiences and you figure out, oh, my skills don't fit that or yeah, my skills are more for this. And it's going to be, some of you are going to be stay at home moms or stay at home dads. Some of you are going to be coaches. Some of you are going to be whatever it is. It doesn't matter. The, the, I don't think God is, is super concerned about what we do more than who we are becoming and and figuring out, okay, I have these natural things. How can I uh, pour more time and effort into those things to become a better person in those particular skills, abilities, and talents so that I can help somebody that doesn't have those, but they have things that I don't. Are you following me? And, And so if we're growing and advancing in who we are and what we do, I don't think we'll ever be at that point of, oh, I'm enough. I, I know enough now. I, I'm a master at this. I, I Because if we're growing, and, and this is for those of you that, that are leaders and, and want to become better, which I, I believe is everybody, if we're, if we're actually growing, if we're actually leading, we are always going to be in this state of, yeah, I'm learning, but I don't feel like I know enough. And this is a good spot to be in because it means that we're stepping out. We're, we're going a little bit further than we did yesterday, but we're not as far as we want to go tomorrow. And, and we're in this weird spot of I'm confident, but I'm a little bit what's going to happen because I'm not fully sure uh, about this. And so when, when you have everything you need, you realize I, I need to get to another level. And I need to incorporate other people. And when we incorporate other people, that's where this comparison trap can fall into place and and we fall into this trap. But when we understand that I have something to bring, you have something to bring, and I'm okay with me being me and you being you, and together we see this amazing masterpiece together, that's when we know that we've... Uh, got somewhere and so I wanted to do this illustration I got some paint here my daughter's been painting stuff and um, so I just decided I would try it Uh, so I got some blue I got some green um, and and on the plate I'm putting them in all different spots so they're not mixing together and and let's just pretend that I'm blue 
And so my, my part is to paint the sky. And, and I'm gonna take some of my blue paint and I'm just going to paint the sky. Just do something real quick. Uh, this might not be as good as my five-year-old daughter's paintings or what some of you can do, but this is an illustration so every illustration eventually falls off and doesn't work but for right now we're not worried about that so i got the sky and let's say somebody else uh, has the gift and ability uh, of green and so they are going to be the ground they're going to be the grass they're going to be um, just this amazing meadow for us to hang out in and uh, somebody else is going to be yellow, and yellow is great, and, and we'll have a, a little sun, and I, I know that the sun doesn't actually have rays, those of you that are uh, artistic, but this is how we did it in elementary school, so that's a sun, and then uh, we're going to have to go back to those of you that are green and and make a little stem maybe put some leaves on there and then we'll clean you off and and then we're going to get some red because some of you have red skills and and we're just going to make a nice little flower i'm not sure what kind of flower this is but it's a nice red flower and we have this masterpiece who knows what uh the asking price on ebay would be for something like that uh we'll find that out later uh, but the problem is, when we begin to fall into this comparison trap, I start out as blue, my natural gifts, my talents, uh, the things that I'm figuring out uh, about who I am, and, and, and everything is good. But then, somewhere along the line, I see somebody who's green, and I want to be green. And so I pour your green onto my blue, and then I see yellow and I'm like, ah, green is good too, but I, I like this yellow and, and, and I wanna be like them and, and I don't think my blue is good enough. And, and then we see red and then we're just pouring that on there and, and just mixing all this stuff together. And, and what, what we were supposed to do is bring our unique color to the painting but, but because I got into this comparison trap, I mixed a little bit of you, a little bit of me, a little bit of somebody else into this, all the while just trying to be me um, and, and get this other color. So we take that and, and I'm trying to be the sky and, and we're getting this nice sky, uh, at least so I think. Um, and then uh, I need to get the green, uh, but it's already in me and, and I'm so concerned about who that person is. So I, I put the grass down there and, 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 then, and then remember we got to get the sun. So that yellow that, that I'm trying to take from somebody or trying to be that I can't really be. So I'm going to take that and, and put the sun up here. Um, and, and get the rays in there again. And remember, we, we have that flower, so we have the stem here, and then we'll put the flower there with a couple leaves. And, and, and you can see that when we try to be somebody that we're not, when, when we try to take the skills, abilities, and talents that we weren't given and, and compare them to somebody else, we, we instead of ending up with uh, a, a, a picture that is different colors that pops in different areas, we, we become this muted, can't tell what's going on kind of picture. And nobody wants that. But we fall into this trap every single day. And, and if I would just be okay with me being blue and you being green and 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 he's red and and she's yellow when we come together we can we can create something together that that looks good and and works well together rather than than me trying to to be everything that I'm not in 1 Corinthians 12 
Paul again talks about this and the, the headline for this in some of your Bibles, you might see it is unity and diversity in the body. And I love that headline. It says this starting in verse 12. It says, just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And you may have heard this before, but let me let me continue reading. Verse 15, Now, if the foot should say, Because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, Because I'm not an eye, I, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? You, you see his sarcasm that he's talking about in here. But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. There are many parts, there are many colors, but one painting. And if we try to just take one color, it doesn't work. We won't be able to see what God is actually trying to create with us if we try to be these different parts and think, oh, I'm not as good as that one, or I'm, I'm not part of this body because I, I'm not this, or oh, I'm not that. And so even though then, even though we have different things and, and we can learn from other people, let's be okay with being who we are and, and be okay with I, I don't bring this to the table, but I bring this. I don't bring that to the table, but I bring this. And together we can, we can work. When we have unity and diversity, we can see the picture for how it's supposed to be. We, we can see the sun, the flowers, the meadow, the sky, all of those things. So steer clear of the comparison trap. Become this humble person that we read at the beginning of this lesson. Be confident in who you are and who you are not. Because when we understand that, we will understand what we can put away and, and not worry about and not have uh, this, this mind of, I have to be everybody, I have to have everything, I have to do this, I have to be like that person. No, no, no. Be confident in who you are and be confident in who you are not. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love you. We praise you for the gifts, the abilities, the talents that you have given us. We thank you for this series. We thank you for how you're speaking to us in this. God, we thank you that we are a masterpiece, that you have given us everything that we need, that you are, are continually making us better and, and showing us new things about who we are and keeping us in this place of, yeah, I'm confident in this and and I know a lot of stuff but tomorrow's coming and I'm not so sure about that but you're giving us the wisdom and the boldness and the knowledge that we need to take that other step and to get to tomorrow when it comes Lord we thank you for who you are Lord I thank you for everybody watching this and I pray that you just bless them right now in Jesus name amen thank you for joining us for elevates weekly message we're praying that this empowers you to seek his kingdom first Stay tuned on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube for more content coming daily.